Hi everybody! We have a video litter update for you for these four week old mini Australian Labradoodle puppies. Hi, I'm Claire from Van Nuyle Labradoodles and today's video we are having you see all seven or nine rather of the mini Labradoodle puppies from our Pinot Noir litter. And in today's video we're going to let you enjoy watching the puppies all play around here and explain to you what we have in here and why we have it. We're going to tell you about what the puppies have been up to this past week, <clears throat> give you some hip, um, tips and hints on socialization, and also we'll give you our regular update on each of the puppies in terms of their weight. So you can see we have lots of things set up in here and we have nine little Labradoodle puppies. Now what is more fun than watching these nine little puppies run around? At four weeks, this is when the puppies really start to become a lot of fun to watch. They start playing with one another, they start playing with toys, and they start exploring new things. So everything we have set up here is done for a purpose. And what we are really working on here is proper socialization and desensitization of the puppies. At four weeks, they are old enough to start this process and this is a very critical stage. The whole time they're with us, it's very important that we work really hard as Labradoodle breeders to make sure when your puppy goes home to you that they're confident, secure, and have had the best start possible. <clears throat> So what we have here, you can see these two are fighting with each other. That's uh, orange and yellow collar, I believe. And here comes brown collar to sort of referee and see what's going on there. You can hear little tiny puppy growls and barks. So much fun. They're just adorable when they're this age. <clears throat> So part of what's going on here is the puppies are, of course, playing, but they're also learning manners. They, this is how they find out what is and it isn't appropriate behavior with their litter mates. It also helps them establish where they fit in the group. Because just like with people, if there's a group of people, there's always gonna be a boss and a leader, and there's always gonna be somebody who is uh, at the bottom of the totem pole, so to speak. One is not better than the other, it's just simply different. Some of us are more outgoing and confident and some of us are more introverted. Exactly the same thing holds true for, for puppies. So what we want to do as breeders is be able to spend enough time with our puppies that we can identify these traits in each of them and then we work towards those strengths and help develop them as best we can. Because you can't just say, oh, here we're going to expose these puppies to a hundred different things while we have them, and there you go, they're socialized. That's not true at all. That's, that's about the worst thing you can do. That's as, almost as bad as doing nothing. What you want is to have all of the puppies associate every new experience with something good. So when you get your puppy home, that's generally going to be a treat. But at this age, these little puppies aren't eating treats yet. They're just barely learning how to have solid food, never mind have a treat. It would be meaningless to them. So instead, we need to find out what matters to them. And what matters to them at this age is lots of love, lots of cuddles, lots of attention. So that's what we give them as a reward and a really happy, positive tone in our voice because the most important thing you can do is have puppies associate new experiences with something that they enjoy. <clears throat> now right now you can hear yellow collars making a little bit of a squeak because he's like, oh, how come nobody wants to play? I'm awake, everybody else is falling asleep. And you see how they've all huddled up here together all around this big teddy. So the reason they're doing that is the teddy mimics mum in a, in a sense. This looks like a big dog to them. So that is mum, of course, is the biggest security blanket for these puppies. So they all want to sleep together and be together. <clears throat> now, if you look over here, if you can see green collar girl over there, she's shivering because she's a little bit unhappy with this experience. She's not too sure about being out here and not in her familiar place. So this is something that we're going to make note of. We're going to spend extra special time with her, doing lots of times when we take her out for just a minute or two, put her in our arms, put her in a different location, reassure her and get her to overcome that concern. <clears throat> 
we definitely don't want to force it and if she remains where she's really upset if she shows me more than just those shivers then we will take her away from the video and put her back in her normal spot now the other thing you'll see is we have some some beds and some other toys now one thing that's really important when you're bringing up a puppy is that you have the most appropriate toys for the age the other thing is that the toys are safe and that they are not going to harm your puppy in any way. If you go to the pet store, there's myriad toys. There's aisles and aisles and aisles of toys and food and it's totally overwhelming. And they all make all sorts of claims and they all have all sorts of things on the label and it's impossible to tell what's what. So right now, what these puppies need is texture and the ability to start to put things in their mouths safely and help their teeth come through. <clears throat> because the puppies are getting to the age where they're just going to start teething. So something like this, this toy here, and this is one of the things we have a very similar item like this in our puppy starter kit. And our puppy starter kit comes complete with all sorts of safe toys and toys that are uh, curated specifically for your individual puppy uh, and that are have been vetted by all of our dogs. <clears throat> Excuse me. For something like this, this has a little a little bit of a tougher rope that goes through here. So this is great for chewing on when they really want to get something to chew on. This part of the animal, of the toy rather, is soft. It has all sorts of different feels to it. So when they're not quite strong enough to chew on this, they can chew on this part and it still gives them that chewing satisfaction, but it's soft enough they can actually get their, their mouth into it, whereas this is often too hard at this age. <clears throat> It's also a toy that's not too big and overwhelming, but it's big enough that more than one of them can play with it at a time. They can pull on the ears and the legs. And you'll see there's some threads here. These toys have all been washed a hundred times. When it gets to the point where um, the threads become loose, then this gets thrown out. This, to this toy has probably been uh, used by oh, more than 10 litters of puppies, so uh, more than 60 puppies. So it's really had uh, a workout. <clears throat> And the other thing we have here is a stuffless stuffy. Again, a nice soft texture, good size, they can pull on the arms, great for just beginning teethers, and also it's something cuddly that they can sleep up against if they want to. This rainbow one here, it has a squeaker. Now we've already worked with these puppies, so you can see they all respond to that sound. But you can see nobody's running away, nobody's nervous, they're just curious. And that's exactly the response we want from the puppies. And then we'll do things like we'll put it over top of the puppy and say, hey, what do you think about that kind of an arrangement? And then we'll see, how does each puppy react? Are they afraid of that? Do they like it? Does it really bother them? <clears throat> If it's something that bothers them, then we'll work with them just by doing this so they get used to the feel and that they aren't worried about having things that go on to their bodies. And then we have this rim crate bed here. This is our intermediary step between um, just sleeping mostly on a flat bed into the donut bed that also comes in the puppy starter kit. So this is all handmade in Canada. There's no synthetics, chemicals, uh, artificial things in it. It's nice and uh, no, no foreign stuffing in it. It's clothing grade stuffing that's in here. Nice and safe for the puppies, comfortable. You'll see <laughs> black collar girls doing a little mountain work here. Uh, you'll see that none of them have chosen to go in here yet and that's totally fine that just tells me that okay we're not ready for this process yet and we'll keep introducing it and we let the puppies tell us when they're ready you don't ever want to have some sort of a rigid program where you say at week such and such my puppy will do this and my puppy will do that Every one of these puppies is going to be different. What this puppy does this week, she may be the one who's the most outgoing and first in everything. And this puppy may be the most unhappy about it all and last. And next week that could be totally reversed. So it's very important that we spend lots of time with the puppy and make lots of notes and then make sure that we adapt everything so that we can help that puppy be the best they can be. 
So little green collar who's a little unhappy there. I'm just going to put her here in between my legs and pet her so that she feels secure and that she thinks that everything's fine. Now you see brown collar girl, she is in the, the bed. And for now, that means she's the one who's ready to do that. Whereas everybody else is quite happy here. And a couple of them are having little shivers just because they're sleeping in an area that is not familiar and it's probably a little colder over here because we're away from the direct heat, heat source. So that's pretty much how we have things set up. This little wavy thing here is part of our Gemma's playground equipment. And this is here again, just waiting for them to use it. It has two different levels, it's slippery, there's lots of problem solving they have to do when they use that. And again, we use this for our assessment. We wait to see who might be interested in trying it out, who can figure out how to get on it, what to do with it. Um, earlier, yellow collar here was trying to get on up here. Uh, he figured out he couldn't. He came down to this end because he was very well able to problem solve that. Oh, down here I can get on. And then he decided, well, it's really not that exciting for me at this point in time. Later on, this will be something that they all love to do and that they all go on multiple times. But for now, it's like, oh yeah, that's some big green thing. Well, they don't know it's green. There's some big thing there, but I'm not interested in it quite yet. So the other thing these puppies are doing this week is they're all eating solid food. Yay! So they have graduated to eating their raw food. So right now they're eating raw chicken uh, and that's mixed with some pumpkin and the pumpkins there is a digestive aid and goat's milk. And we use goat's milk because that is most like mama's milk. Uh, dogs cannot uh, digest lactic acid and that's what's found in cow's milk. So dogs do not eat cow's milk, but they're fine with goat's milk. Uh, so they're all starting on that. You can see some of them are wearing some of their food. Uh, some breeders like to bath their puppies a lot. Uh, we do not want to be bathing our puppies at this age because their skin is so delicate and so sensitive. And plus at this age, they're going through so many things. They're teething, they're starting to be weaned by mom. They're starting to play, they're learning where they are in the group. That's a lot of things for an infant puppy to be doing. The last thing we want to do is overwhelm them and introduce them to something on top of that. So we do not bath our puppies until they're five weeks old. So next week, all of the lucky families who are on our reservation list will be here for their puppy family visit. And that's when we will give the puppies a bath. That way when you get to visit them, they're all spick and span and nice and shiny. And it's the right time to introduce them to a new experience like that. So it's all about figuring out the timing, spending a lot of time with the puppies. At By Nile Doodles, this is all we do. We, we don't have young children in our home. We don't have outside careers. This is our lives. We spend all of our time with the puppies. We focus on the puppies. That gives us lots of time to spend with the puppies, get to know them, and really allow each puppy to be the best they can be. Now, what is Dottie doing this week? Dottie is starting to wean her puppies. She's not in here right now. She chose not to be here. All of our families will meet her next week at the puppy family visit. And she's not here because she knows instinctively it's about time to wean the puppies. And the puppies are getting their teeth and it becomes a little uncomfortable to be a nursing mom when uh, those little piranha teeth come in. So it's uh, nature tells you, but also you get that pain cue that, yeah, it's time for me to step back a bit from nursing my puppies. So what we'll do to aid in that process is we'll leave the door open at night to Dottie's area. That way she'll come out into the main part of the doodle den. She'll probably sleep on the Chesterfield we have for our mama dogs. She will be able to see and hear the puppies in case they need her and to go in and feed them during the night if they need that. But the puppies won't be able to see her. They'll know she's here but they won't be able to see her. And this is the most important and first step towards eliminating any separation anxiety in a puppy. Because now they're here, their source of comfort, which is Dottie, is not in their line of sight, but they have everybody there in their litter for support and they're not upset by that. And that teaches them, oh, my mom, whether it's my human mom or my dog mom, 
goes away, but she always comes back. Or my dad, whatever you want to say. I'm not saying you have to be a mom, you can be a dad. Um, so that is how puppies start to make that first association. So some breeders uh, send their puppies, their guardian dogs home right at five weeks, that's it, cut, bang, boom, bam, you're done, and uh, the puppies are weaned. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, we prefer to let our moms tell us when they're ready, and we like to watch the puppies and have them tell us when they're ready. Again, there isn't a one thing and one size fits all with puppies, just like with people. There's introverts and extroverts, there's leaders, there's followers. We want to watch each of the puppies and then make everything work for the puppy. That's what matters the most. So you can see they're all sleeping now. They're not giving you a very good example of how they play together. Uh, but you can see in the front here we have the pee pads and you'll see there's pee on the pee pads. And that's because they're super smart and they are learning already. This is where we sleep and that's where we go. And so again, we're building on all these natural instincts to set the puppies and you up for success for things that matter such as house training, which is obviously something that's important to everybody when they get their their puppy home so now let's go through each of the puppies we'll give you a quick look at them give you an update on their weights and we'll do them in birth order like we always do and we're going to start with orange collar who's here just no that's yellow collar sorry this is orange collar hello orangey I do my handsome man you may hear some growls and barks from the puppies when I'm holding them up because they've all found their voice this week. This handsome little boy is a gorgeous chocolate with some beautiful white markings on his chest. I just love his little face. He reminds me so much of Dottie. He has that adorable little look on his face. Uh, these puppies all have a lot of Dottie in them and I also see Grandma Ripple. And Grandma Ripple has quite a strong influence uh, on her puppies generation after generation. This little one reminds me of Ripple uh, from, from the shape of the face and mostly the eyes. Very expressive. He is a very interactive puppy. He's one of the first that comes running out when we come in. It's like, hey, here I am. Let's play. Tail's always going. And Mr. Orange is up to 1.31 kilograms. And he is the biggest puppy in the litter. Yes, you are. Oh, my goodness. Firstborn and the biggest. Next, we have the opposite end of the scale at our second born. We have our smallest puppy in the litter. Now, this little girl, black collar girl, she's a black and white party girl. Now, you see, when they're sleeping, you want to be sure you tell them with lots of advance notice that you're coming before you start to pick them up or do something with them. This little ragamuffin here, she looks a little messy because her coat's lifting. She may be the tiniest, but oh my goodness, has she got a lot of feistiness in her. Confident, sweet as a little button, and this is a try. This little girl is a full phantom and a full party. Really special little girl. Dizzy tiny little thing, but a huge personality. And Miss Black Collar Girl is 940 grams, aren't you? Do you have a kiss? Do you have a kiss? And you can see her little black nose is starting to fill in and then she has that gorgeous little black beauty spot on her. Just a little doll. Aren't you little black collar girl? Oh, and look at how brown and green are sleeping together. It's so funny. That's a really interesting thing as a breeder. You often find the colors stay together. So the caramels are together. Often the blacks will be together and the chocolates together. Many of us Labradoodle breeders find this occurs and all of us kind of wonder why because of course dogs have no idea what they look like. So my theory is that there is probably some sort of olfactory uh, thing that comes from pigmentation and that the dogs are drawn to a similar pigment that, that they have and that they can sense that and smell that. Dogs are remarkable for what they can sense and smell. I mean, they can tell you if there's money in a suitcase, drugs, if someone is co has COVID, cancer, uh, they can detect if you're going to have a seizure. So I just wonder if there isn't some sort of thing that goes with pigment that makes them able to identify, oh yeah, I belong in this color family. It's kind of an interesting little thing. Next we have yellow collar and yellow collar is over here. Hello, sweetie pie. How are you? 
Hi, Joe. How are you? He's a good little boy. Little yellow collar boy is another chocolate boy with a little bit of white on his chest, a little white goatee. He's a little bit more outgoing than orange collar. Not so much outgoing as just a little bit uh, more talkative about things. He has a couple of little phantom light markings on him here. So he's what I would call a leaked phantom. He probably has three out of the four necessary genes to be a phantom. Uh, and that's why we can see some phantom signs, but not the full phantom uh, tan points. You can see there's nothing over his eyebrows. And Mr. Yellow Collar is 1.17 kilograms. It's amazing that they're almost all, there's only two of them that aren't over a kilogram at four weeks. They really, really have done beautifully in terms of their weight gain. Next is Pink Collar Girl. It's our you pink collar girl. And this is light pink collar girl that we're looking at here. Oh, have you got your collar on still? Oh, yep, there we go. And light pink collar girl. Now she is a black phantom with lots of white markings. So you can see if you look at her face how strongly that those phantom markings are showing. So that's what a phantom looks like. So that's why I say the puppy before her is perhaps a leaked phantom because you don't see uh, that uh, a level of marking on a uh, yellow collar that you do on pink. Pink's a little dull. She's a quiet girl. Pretty much right in the middle of the pack, aren't you, baby? Nothing really seems to scare her. She just takes everything in stride, and she's 1.21 kilograms. Next, we have green collar. Green, where are you, green? And green is this caramel girl right over here underneath her sister brown collar. There we go. Sorry to disturb you guys. Oh, I know. Green collar, she's a quiet girl. She's very sweet, but she is a little quieter. She's not as outgoing as the other puppy. She's still looking for lots of support and comfort. Gentle, gentle soul, just a quiet little thing. So we respond to her in a very different way. You can tell even having her right up next to me, she's curled right up. She's, she's leaning way in and I'll lower my voice with her. So what we do with her is we just take her out on her own more frequently, just so she gets used to it and is comfortable with it. And Green Collar Girl is 1.01 kilogram, so just over one kilogram. And look at how cute that face is. Oh, it's just the most adorable face. Oh, and um, she's, she is either a caramel or an apricot, but I believe, as I've said before, she's an apricot because I think her pads look like they're going to be black. But we will still wait to make sure because sometimes they can trick you. So that's Green Collar Girl. Next is her caramel sister, Brown Collar Girl. Here you go, Green. Everything okay? Good girl, good girl, there we go. So see, so we just do a little bit of extra time with her to gentle everything up for her. Brown, brown collar girl is the opposite from her, her apricot sister. Brown collar is full of vim and vinegar. She's a happy girl. She's not scared of anything. She's outgoing and you can tell for sure she's an apricot because her nose is always already filling in with that black pigment. Lots of gorgeous caramel markings on this party. Cute little face, oh my goodness. Again, this puppy reminds me of Ripple so much. Has that same face to her. And brown color is 1.06 kilograms now. Hey feisty, that's what I call her, feisty one. So I'll put her back down next to her caramel sister so they can cuddle up together and they can offer each other warmth, support, and just be the great pals that they are. Uh, next is light blue. Where are you, light blue? Light blue, light blue. No, you're not light blue. I'm always, oh, light blue is this one. We have four litters right now, um, so I don't have always in my top of my mind who's who in terms of their color colors. Mr. Light Blue, well now this is one handsome dog. If you watch our channel, you'll know that black and white is my favorite thing in the entire world. And this absolutely stunning party boy is no exception. He has beautiful symmetrical markings. His black gleams. His white, when he has a bath, will be crisp, crisp and clean. Uh, he's just a doll. This is our little gentle giant boy. He's bigger, 
sweet as can be, never bossy, very much sort of uh, keeps to himself, but very observant and quite a confident little guy. Right, buddy? And Mr. Light Blue is coming in at 1.06 kilograms as well. So he used to be way bigger than a brown collar girl. Now they're the same. So that's why I always say at the beginning when we get puppies, don't think that the biggest is going to stay the biggest and the smallest is going to stay the smallest. I'm just going to move this little sweetie pie. This is dark pink over here because she's shivering because she's right on the on the floor here. Normally the puppies are nowhere near the floor. It's just we have this here temporarily for you. So otherwise they lie on a great deal of padding and protection and so they're always warm. But when they lie right here on, on the actual floor it can be a bit chilly for them. Uh, so next is dark pink. Actually I could have just kept you up there little lady. Dark pink is our pretty little chocolate girl. This little girl, well, she's kind of a favorite around here. She is very outgoing and personable. She's always got a nice little tail wag for you every time she sees you. She too has that same face. Everybody has this adorable face. It's really a trademark in this litter. A beautiful little face. It's so much like their mama Dottie and their grandma Ripple. Just the prettiest little puppies. And dark pink is 990 grams. So she's just a bit under a kilogram. There we go, my little sweet. I just put you right down there. And look at yellow collar falling out of the bed. That's a very interesting way to sleep. <laughs> and you can see over here, my toes are getting bitten here. Uh, this is uh, just something that they're starting to do now. This is very common that they're going to be biting on my toes. This is pink collar girl, light pink collar girl. Again, because at this age, everything goes in the mouth. And now dark blue collar is our last fellow. He's sound asleep. So I'm just gonna gently wake him up, even though he's not. <laughs> so this is how accustomed they are to being handled, that uh, when they're touched, they, they just continue on sleeping. They don't jump or jerk or say, oh, well, this isn't something that happens all the time, is we do constantly handle them at this point. Dark blue is 1.06 kilograms, so we have Three of them at, uh, at 1.06 kilograms, brown, light blue, and dark blue. And this handsome boy is also a phantom, and he also has lots and lots of white markings on him. So he's a really pretty guy. I love how the phantom and the white together against the black really uh, set each other off. And you can see he, his phantom markings are a slightly different color than light pink's colors. So you can see her eyebrows are a little bit more coppery than, than his are, uh, but not big difference, just a little difference there. And he says, oh, that's enough of that. Quit comparing me to my sister. So that's all of the puppies. As for Dottie, she's just doing great. She has a huge appetite now. This is when mamas have their biggest appetite. And like I said, she is starting to do the natural process of starting to spend more time away from the puppies and starting to wean them. And she is asking to go out more and spend more time with us. Uh, next week, she'll not sleep in here at all. We'll move the puppies to the next level where their mom is not in here at night and she'll come back and sleep in our bedroom with us. Uh, Ripple will not be pleased because Dottie shares the bed with her and Ripple doesn't like to share the bed with anyone except for us. But she'll live. So that's the puppies. I hope you enjoyed this update. I hope all of the information on socialization was helpful for you. Uh, we have lots of videos coming your way if you're on this litter list to help go over socialization in more detail for you. And if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to put them below. I'm always happy to answer them for you. And if you enjoyed the video and have time, give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate that. And we look forward to seeing you all again next week we will not have a litter update because it will our pup be our puppy family visit week instead uh, so we'll see you all again in two weeks time when the puppies are six weeks old thanks so much for watching are you biting me are you biting me oh my god you got teeth already yeah you do